Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. And today's video is going to be about blending in Photoshop. I had this request and figured I would address it. So here we go. Uh, I'm going to show you two different methods of blending that I use. And that's why I've got the dual screens going on here and I've got everything open so you can see it. Using Photoshop CC uh, 2014. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So. Uh, the preferred method that I use is going to be right here. I kind of work in a grayscale at first, and I'll show you what I do there. Now, keep in mind, uh, my settings on this brush are where are my brushes here? No brush. Okay, transfer, pen pressure, pen pressure. So you can copy those settings right there. Now, with that type of setting, you can easily get a nice transition and leave a little bit of texture in there. So that's actually one way to blend. And then you can use Alt, select the white, and blend back. Then you can even use Alt in the middle and blend outward. And then you kind of keep repeating that process. Size your brush back and forth. And you see you start to get rid of that grain just a little bit. And that's a really quick w way to blend because you don't have to keep changing your tool. Now that's in a, in a grayscale uh, method or motion or effect or whatever. Now, the other thing is you grab the smudge brush, and I've got one that I've labeled, uh, I think, good smudge brush or blending brush smooth. Okay, and I'll show you the settings there. Transfer, it doesn't allow you to uh, change the opacity jitter, the controls uh, not enabled there, or whatever. And then here you've got pen pressure. Then I put a little bit of scattering on both axes at 20%. And what that does is it gives me just a little bit of texture. Uh, I'll blend right here real quick, and then I'll zoom up to it and show you what I'm talking about. So I can soften that that line. Now keep in mind I'm going with the, you know, the strokes of the pattern that I was creating. Uh, if you want an entirely different effect, you can, you know, go like this and get a, you know, different kind of texture in there, uh, or you can move color around. But typically, I kind of just blend like this. Like I'm actually just pulling in one direction right there. And I can get it nice and smooth that way. And also, I'm putting a, a very light pressure. I'm not, you know, if I bear down on this, you see what it's going to do? So here's me putting, you know, 10%, 5% pressure, if that. Here's me doing like 80, you know, and it pulls the color. So that serves a purpose when you're trying to do that. And you want to pull color into an area. Uh, another good technique for that is if you're trying to, you know, pull color around or pull a certain tone around versus just holding Alt and selecting it, you can go to a hard round brush and you can really pull it, you know, pull it anywhere you want. So it's really neat, like if you've got a, you know, certain tone, say, you know, say I like this tone, I don't know, right here, and I want this over to here, I can just pull that over there and then start manipulating it. You know, it doesn't you don't use it all the time but it comes in handy you know in certain times and then uh, you can even blend with this brush uh, I don't it leaves a little bit more of a you know an artifacting in there that I don't particularly like but there's certain instances where that comes in really handy uh, and allows you to keep a certain you know uh, texture to your work and a certain uh, vividness so try both of those you know try the regular with the settings I showed you in the hard round brush I'll show you those settings too just simply pin pressure no shape dynamics remember that shape dynamics are just for drawing really you know and I and there's times I don't even use it for that okay so back to that other brush I want to show you and then we'll move on to the color uh, this particular brush it leaves that little bit of texturing so what scattering basically does is moves the pickle uh, picks up <laughs> pickles pixels side to side so picture that you know instead of it just going smoothly left and right it's also jittering it and moving it angular a little bit so you know you get a little bit more of a natural feel or you know kind of a canvas or a texturing and that comes in handy you know some of that looks really cool if you get too much smoothness in your work there's really no point you might as well just grab your airbrush you know soft round um, put it on you know something like this where you got a really low opacity maybe a low flow and just do this all day you know because you can get really nice effects just by doing that and you can also blend with this too so say you know you see a little bit 
you know, a little bit of choppiness in this gradation right here. Hold Alt, select the tone that you like, get the brush just right, blend back and forth through there with the soft brush, and it'll slowly work that down. But again, I wouldn't get in the habit, you, you know, of totally eliminating all this little artifacting and texturing because that's what gives you a cool looking painting. Um, if not, like I said, you could just sit around and airbrush like this all day long and still get really nice effects. It's just going to look, uh, you know, like you've got one of those Pache airbrushes from back in the day and you're out there, you know, airbrushing a canvas. Okay, so now over here I'm going to show you the difference in using kind of a similar technique but with color. Uh, like I said, I typically work in black and white and then add my color, but um, the more and more I progress, I, I've been uh, jumping right to color. Or even after I apply some color in the grayscale, I start sampling the color tones I like and painting with normal mode. So, okay, so at any rate, we'll start with, uh, we'll block in some red here. Let's do like a, let's do a red, you know, orange, yellow kind of thing. So I've already got transfer set on this brush, so if I really wanted to take my time and paint it in nice and light, I'm putting down light, light amounts of pressure, I can blend with just that. Oh. Grab a nice bright like brimstone yellow. Okay, so you know because it's set to transfer over there, I can just slightly press down and barely even touching the canvas, and then I can get that gradation that I want. Now, then if I want to refine that, which Honestly, that's pretty pretty darn close right there, but uh, you just simply select, you know, your color that you want to blend back and forth. Now keep in mind, I got these pretty low. A lot of guys like to paint 100% uh, 100 opacity. Uh, I don't. I mean, I will at times, but I, I like the, you know, the gradations and the medium colors and all that. So like if I select here, right, see that color? It shows you right there on the swatch. The top color is the one I'm picking right now. The bottom color is the last one used, I believe. So now I can slightly paint, you know, again, I'm pressing really light. And I can go in both directions. And then see how it made another color here? I can select that. I can paint that over a little bit more. And I can eliminate lines that way. So, you know, here it's even a touch lighter. And if I just keep doing that and really take my time, I can get this to blend where you don't see these lines. Again, I don't really want to do that. I want a little bit of that texturing in there, or why would I even paint this way? I would just jump to airbrushes. So that essentially is how I would, you know, paint with those two effects, you know. The other thing is you can still grab your smudge brush with those same settings I showed you, and you can softly push these lines back and forth. Again, I'm pulling in one direction and really blend that even further. So, to me, that's the two main, you know, um, digital painting methods and ways to blend. Uh, again, you can mix a soft brush in there. Uh, another technique you can even do when you want hard line edges, you can do all this nice little fading and you can, well, I didn't mean to erase the canvas, but you can erase parts of it if it's on another layer, or in that case with a solid brush. Um, you know, say I want to bring this to a hard edge, you just paint that hard edge in there. So, you know, you mix all those things combined, and that's how you start getting your uh, your cool digital paintings and your effects and things like that. The other thing is, you know, mix in your selection tools with that. So, you know, you want this nice, you know, say this is a, I don't know, a hill or a bicep to an arm or whatever. So you want a nice little highlight in there. I don't know who has a, you know, reddish yellow arm, but whatever. You want a nice little highlight in there. You select, you know, you start painting the little highlight in there. That, that would be a, um, a rim or edge lighting, and then you take a darker tone. It always casts a little bit of a shadow like that when you do an, um, an edge lighting like that. And then you get something like that. And you go select inverse. You know, whatever. I don't know, funky looking fruit there. But, you know, at any rate, I'm trying to show you the uh, the way it highlights and shadows, not so much of trying to paint something there. So, at any rate, hopefully that's helped you. I had the request on the show blending methods, and, and to me, that's really all that it boils down to. The smudging, 
the soft airbrush if you need it um, you know and, and then varying degrees of all of that you gotta mix it up you gotta play with these opacities in your flow you've gotta mess with the brush settings and and try different things and experiment it's all about experimentation especially with digital painting so hopefully this has helped you be sure to like subscribe share if you don't mind and I appreciate you watching we'll talk to you soon take care have fun Thank you.